final day of CC's build. All we have left is the Max fan. We're gonna hook up shore power to the bus and run the generator to charge. We're under trees so the dogs can stay cool. We wanna keep our batteries topped off. Other than that, there's nothing left to do but get this Max fan installed. If you're thinking about installing a Max fan or a fantastic fan to your rig, number one, I highly recommend it. And they're comparable in quality. And number two, they're both 14 by 14 on the measurement. So just go a little bigger than 14 because it's a lot easier to deal with it being a quarter inch too big than it is to try to make it a little bit bigger once you've already made the cut. So it's 14 by 14. That's the standard size of a Max fan or a Fantastic fan. And go ahead and cut yourself 14 and a quarter by 14 and a quarter and save yourself a little bit of grief on the install. Other than that, you're going to need butyl tape, Dicor and whatever power tools you need. The rest of it is uh, in the box. Let's get started. When installing a fan, whether it be a Fantastic or a Max fan, where I usually start is underneath. In this particular install, we get the benefit of seeing how the ceiling is constructed. Sometimes there's materials here and there's wires running the length of the vehicle and we can't see those. And so we have to do those installations differently. This one, we can see that we're out of trouble. I know that our solar panels start here because this is our last Z bracket mount and go forward. So I know that we're out of trouble on the solar panels from here back. And after talking to Cece about where she wants it, she wants it in the middle in between these two. Now these two are gonna be 14 inches apart or more than 14 inches apart. So we're gonna measure that. The tools that I start with is a carpenter square or a carpenter square, a Sharpie, and a disc grinder to cut the metal with. This disc grinder has a metal cutting blade on it. When you go down to get your blades, make sure that you don't get the masonry blade because it looks just like it. It'll say on here what it, the application is on the labeling. So whether you're buying it off of Amazon or at a big box hardware store, just make sure you get the right disc that's made to cut metal. Now you can cut these roofs with sawzalls. You can cut them with jigsaws with a metal cutting blade. They even make tin cutting snips that are electric for cutting roofs like this. I've always found that I have the absolute most control and the cleanest results with a disc grinder. And I believe I picked this this is a four and a half amp, and I bet you I paid just under $30 for it. So we're not talking about a big, a big investment in, in cost. Carbon square, disc cutting blade, Sharpie to mark it with, and then I also use my drill with a, with a pilot bit. Once I mark where it's gonna be, I go ahead and drill the four corners. So when I go on the roof, all I have to do is take my carpenter square and connect the four corners and there's my cut. I'm gonna go 14 by 14 at a quarter of an inch to give myself a little wiggle room. They make the flange for these wide enough that you can give yourself a lot more than that. So don't worry about giving yourself that extra quarter inch. We want to clean the area really well before we get started and we're going to need butyl tape. Propyl alcohol, you could also use denatured alcohol. We do this to create a good seal when we lay down our die core. We want to put as many things in our favor as possible so this uh, fan doesn't leak once we're finish with the install. Probably should draw this out. I know I've got the ridge on this, but I don't have anything on the other ones. This is the right van, isn't it?
are great. They're comparable to each other. Yeah, they they both have a great re reputation. So. Are we filming? We've dry fitted it. I know that this is a good uh, going to be a good uh, hole that we've cut out for it. So now I'm going to put in the butyl tape as the first line of sealing it. You notice that the roof is uneven, so I'm just going to build the butyl tape up on the lows and make it so it's an even seal all the way around. some scissors. I like scissors cut this stuff. See how I'm stretching it too? I want to not stretch it. Okay. You see what I'm doing with the butyl tape? As I'm laying it in the low spots, I'm coming around. I'm giving myself a little bit to come around and catch this lip and cover the bare metal so the bare metal is uh, protected against corrosion over time. This is what your max fan is going to look like out of the box. You're going to have the bottom flange. This goes in the inside of the vehicle up in and is held in place by some screws. You're going to have a bottom bracket that detaches like so. This is what we lay down. We want to make sure our screws mounts are on the sides and then once we screw this in and die core it we'll lay the top down over it and put our four screws in I want to just make sure this is perfect before we start mounting it Once we've determined that we're square here, let's put some screws in this and hold it in place. And we get screws from the packaging. Some of the screws are have white paint on them. We'll save those for the flange and the ceiling when we get inside. These they look like stainless steel to me. We'll use these on the inside, on the outside. Now when I screw this in, I'm gonna do it the same way you would tighten the lugs on a tire. I'm gonna go across. And then I'll hit the middle. That way we set this thing down even as we as we screw it down onto this onto the roof. These are self-tapping screws. Once it starts, you see right when it starts, I let go of the trigger. I can back it down to a one where I have more control. And I just want to make sure that I don't spin it through that sheet metal. I want to make sure it's gripping. And the way I make sure it's gripping is the second it starts getting in there, I back off the trigger immediately and then I ease it down in there. And, I'm, and I can even come back with a, a hand Phillips head on the final tighten down. Now it's time for the die core. 
everything that you need to operate this tube of Dicor caulk is built into the gun. So we're gonna stick the tip in here, clip it. And then fix it with scissors. Should have done that in the first place. And open it. If you've never operated a caulking gun before, it's just a plunger. Stick it in like this. And apply liberally. The way these Max fans go in is a little bit different than the Fantastic fan. With, with mounting the bracket first and then the fan, you'd probably be doing yourself a favor by putting the die core down and letting it uh, self-level and dry a little bit before you set the Max fan on and put the four set screws in. Yeah. The Max fan goes with the hinge in the front, like so. Let's put it on. Make sure our wires are going to be accessible before we bolt it down. metal tabs that we screw into to mount this fan make sure those tabs are up a little bit if they're sitting down flush on the flange the holes aren't going to line up and so those tabs are meant to be up maybe an eighth of an inch and you'll be fine this fan has got a thermostat on it it's got 10 speeds it's got a thermostat and a remote control you can set it to a temperature and go to bed and as the night cools and it reaches the temperature you set it at, it'll turn off so you don't wake up cold with the fan blowing on you. It's pretty nice. And with this cover, it can be open without rain getting in. So you can run it when it's raining if you wanted to. That's, that's the idea behind this design with Max Air. There you have it on the roof. We're all sealed and ready to move down and connect the wires.
You're on. This is a pretty simple. We're gonna have to go blue on the bus places. This is a, a simple installation. We just go. We're provided with white and black. White is neutral, and black carries the load, so black would be positive, which would be red. And in this case, we're matching it with automotive wiring, black and red. So in this case, black would not go to black. Black is load, positive. It even says positive on it, and red, positive. So that's how we're going to wire this up. We are very close to having the installation complete. Sarah's multitasking, handing me but splices and holding the camera. Thank you. When you're connecting butt splices, we don't have to worry about putting them both in at the same time. It's easier to go one at a time. When we're connecting butt splices, we don't have to go two at a time. We two time sides at a time. We can go one side at a time. So red's going to be black in this case. This comes with a remote. Let's see if the batteries are in it. We get a remote, a cradle, which we'll go ahead and mount for CC. A couple screws for it, batteries. This is what it looks like when you put the batteries in it first, LED display. Let's turn it on. Roof temperature 73 degrees, set temperature 78. Turn it on. And I don't know how well it's picking up on the mic, but the only sound I hear is the blades. There's no engine, there's no motor noise. It's all just the sound of the blades, so it's quiet. It looks like it's drawing out in this setting. We can either draw air out and have fresh air come in through the windows or we can have air pushed down from the top. It's just up to us how we want to set it. The next step would be for us to mount the ceiling flange for a nice clean finished look. And it would just go like so and there'd be four screws. Look at how thick this is. They don't expect you to leave it this thick. What if your ceiling is just a little bit of foam board and then you use some you know, wacky wood or some of these uh, tongue and grooves that you see on these van installations and it's not very thick you this is made to be cut so you just put it up get your measurement get your measurement here draw yourself a line use your carpenter square if you like and you can use that same blade that we cut the steel with to cut this plastic I do it all the time and it makes a real clean cut have somebody hold it for you wait that's probably really dangerous I never let anybody hold it for me I usually secure it in a vise and then make your cuts, put it in there, four screws, bada boom, bada bing, you're done. But we're not going to do that for CC because she has, doesn't have her ceiling in yet. We're just going to leave this for her. But there you have it. This took us, we had to run the wire, but, you know, what do we got in this? Maybe an hour, hour and a half? And you're, and you're going to enjoy ventilation for uh, all these hot summers to come. Hopefully this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. Here we are, the job has been completed. We put in solar, an isolator, an inverter, ran some outlets, and a max fan. And we have CC here that we did the job for, and we're gonna run through everything that we did with her right now. So let's take a look. Starting on the roof, we have 400 watts of solar. Come here. You're gonna pick me up? No, I'm scared. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs>
<laughs> She's so little. 400 watts of solar, 100 uh, watt red energy panels times four. Oh, let's take a look at the <laughs> penetration on the roof. Here's where we went in. Are you getting that? Um, I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we come inside. We have four 225 amp hour six volt AGM VMAX batteries, which call for an absorption charge of 14.8. So we calibrated the 3000i Blue Sky solar controller to 14.8 on the absorption, which means when they charge these batteries, it, that the solar panels won't charge it any more than 14.8 volts. Here we have our pure sine wave inverter, which comes with a GFI outlet on the side. It's a 2000 watt 4000 peak we have a 200 amp breaker for that we have the battery bank grounded to the chassis we have the inverter grounded to the chassis we put a 29 30 seconds piece of plywood in and uh, self tap screwed it to the frame of the vehicle so none of this will shift around when she's driving we have three outlets that are 110 for a maximum of 15 amps at each outlet and the USB ports on them are 3.6 amp high powered USB ports. Let's take a look. Oh, the max fan over here. We've got, by the way, a fuse block that we put in. Seven and a half amp fuse on the max fan. 30 amp fuse on the battery side of the solar system. We have a remote for the max fan. I don't know if you're hearing this, it's very quiet. There's no motor noise, there's just the noise of the blades turning. It's nice and cool inside too. It's got a thermostat set where she can set it to a certain temperature and when it reaches that temperature at night as it cools off, the fan will shut off so it's not uh, over cooling while she's sleeping. Let's take a look at the isolator. We, we installed an isolator to be able to uh, charge the coach batteries while the engine's running. Let's take a look at that too. Here's where we're coming in on the isolator right here and right here. our 100 amp continuous duty solenoid so she can glean power off of the alternator when the engine's running CC what do you think I'm excited I I can't wait to get in it but you know still have a little bit of building to do but it looks great uh, all of the the uh, solar panels are lined up beautifully and you know the fan looks great and everything inside looks great it's all neatly done i'm i'm excited i can't wait how is having a vehicle like this going to change your life well i'm pretty isolated where i am so this will this will change that you know i'll be able to beep up around maybe not as maybe not like other people like you and many other vanners but um I'll be able to be mobile and, and see places, maybe at a slower pace. <laughs> that was the dog, by the way. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be great. Well, I'm glad you're happy with it. And I'm it's been excited. a pleasure meeting you and thank you for taking such good care of us while we were here. Oh, no problem. It was a pleasure of mine. It was so nice to meet both of you. Likewise. And the dogs, they were great. It was wonderful. How about a hug? Oh, sure. <laughs> never pass up a hug. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. They did a great job, everyone. I highly recommend them.